top 10 draws near, thy command. Indeed, wherein we shall be tested and found entirely worthy of the true power of- Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and on this list, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Dragon Quest characters. I didn't like the look of her. Lucky she hasn't noticed us yet. For this list, we focused mostly on important NPCs, playable characters, and bosses, so that lovable Hershey's Kiss-shaped monster and official series mascot Slime doesn't make an appearance here, unfortunately. We chose the most popular among fans, characters who are colorful, memorable, and important to the series. Though already having many excellent qualities, our party has requirement of your premium spells. Well, of course. <laughs> Number 10, Nera Briscoletti, Dragon Quest V. Bianca and I were wondering if you might allow us to accompany you. You realize that all she can be is a wife who relies on you for shelter and protection. Nera Briscoletti of Dragon Quest V, true to the Princess in Trouble cliche, gets turned into a statue after you marry her. In addition to getting two rings just to marry her, now you have to get a magic ring to turn her back, after you've been a slave for ten years on top of that, which is basically what marriage is anyway. Now, go to your special one, sweet Beryl. Nera is not only the mother of the fifth hero of Dragon Quest V, but a descendant of the sixth hero of Dragon Quest VI. Wait a minute, time warp? Number 9, Terry, Dragon Quest series. I'm the world's greatest swordsman, pal. Underestimate me again, and I'll try you clean in two. She's your sister, mister. The Dragon Quest equivalent of Luke Skywalker, Terry sets out in Dragon Quest VI to rescue his sister, failing to realize that she's a member of the party. He does it again in Dragon Quest Monsters, failing to realize that she's the final boss. But what he lacks in the family recognition department, he more than makes up for in strength. Terry is memorable because he's extremely overpowered, according to Vance, to the point where there's a joke that Terry is short for Terror, which is what the monsters must feel when they face him. This old Children of Light thing's got me wondering, so... Sure, I'll tag along, for now. Name's Terry, by the way. <laughs> Number 8, Elena, Dragon Quest IV. Kirill, what say you that we accompany these fine heroes on their noble quest? The good news is she's a friggin' ninja with high strength, hit points, and agility. The bad news is she talks to plants, she struck her overprotective father mute, and can save a village from a monster demanding human sacrifices and a princess from a forced marriage, but she can't recover a medicinal herb. Seriously, she joins the party after the hero gets a seed from a talking weed that heals her servant. So while she's busy saving the world, she can't stop and smell the roses, let alone pick them. <music> Elena is memorable for her Russian accent, choice of claws as a weapon, and dressing like a wizard but having no magic. What kind of ninja has no magic, other than the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course. If you were to become harmed in such a place, I would, uh, your revered <laughs> father his babblings. Would... These monsters, you say they were not always so much crazed, yes? Number 7, Barbara, aka Ashlyn, Dragon Quest VI. She knows the most powerful attack spell in the game, but she also might not be alive and suffers from amnesia. Ashlyn, known as Barbara in the Japanese version, may have gotten her name since her body was barbecued to ashes. She first appears as a spirit, but gets a body after the sixth hero sprinkles magic dew on her. She fades away after the final boss battle, but appears in Zenithia after the credits, where she spends a significant amount of time watching an egg full of light hatch. It must be one of those 10 kilometer Pokemon eggs. Anyway, Ashlyn is memorable because she learns spells without the use of the class system. Instead, she learns them at points in the plot that usually involve someone dying. Number 6, Maya, Dragon Quest series. Maya, is it truly you? Oh, Elena! Oh my, and Kiddle too! Oh, what in the world are you two doing here? Maya is virtually naked, which is all the better for distracting the monsters with her dancing. Just go with it. Maya manages to defeat her father's murderer, but another boss appears and throws her into the dungeon. No worries, an idiot knows where the secret exit is, yet never bothered to use it. And talk about a dragon warrior. She can actually turn into a dragon. Just don't trust this problem gambler with your party's gold. And expect to hear plenty of complaining if you're in a town without a casino. I knew it. The hand of fate has guided me to you. Wealthy. <clears throat> I mean noble heroes. Number five, the eighth hero. Dragon Quest VIII. Ah, there you are. I trust you slept well. <laughs> Some heroes rescue the princess. 
This silent protagonist is trying to change the princess back into a human because she's been turned into his horse. In fact, he rescues everyone he comes across, whether it's saving a bandit from falling off a bridge, saving a spoiled rich girl who set off to avenge her brother, saving the spoiled rich girl again when she gets possessed by a staff. In fact, he saves just about everyone but the dog. Yes, he actually kills the dog. You fools. How many more times? Memorable for looking like a Super Saiyan, he turns pink and has wild hair when he maxes out his tension. Number 4, Jessica Albert, Dragon Quest VIII. Okay then, I'll be waiting for you down in the courtyard. A spoiled rich girl responsible for more near-death experiences than a one-way street on opposite day, Jessica Albert is a powerful mage who sets out to avenge the murder of her brother. She joins the party and helps kill a boss and then becomes possessed by his scepter, almost killing the hero in the process. Five. I knew I'd have to fight you somewhere along the way. Her armor includes a bustier, but no clue as to how that actually helps. She also, fun fact, has an entire category of attacks called sex appeal. And she can fight with whips. Whips, sex appeal, bustiers. This one's really pushing the teed for teen rating. <laughs> hmm. Number three, the third hero, aka Erdrick, Dragon Quest III. Although this hero doesn't appear until Dragon Quest III, the child of Ortega is responsible for most of the events in Dragon Quest I and II. This hero saves the world from two demons and leaves behind an incredibly strong set of armor and a powerful sword, along with a token to show lineage and a tablet with instructions on how to reach the Dragon Lord in Dragon Quest I. So not only is Erdrick a hero, but apparently a blacksmith whose goods don't deteriorate and also a psychic. Also, Erdrick was the first hero in the series to have a choice of gender, class, and personality. Number two, Yangus, Dragon Quest VIII. Go blimey! Core blimey indeed. We first meet Yangus on a bridge where he attacks the eighth hero in an attempt to rob him, but merely manages to destroy the bridge while he's still on it. The hero helps him, and Yangus reforms and joins the party, calling the hero Gov and claiming he helped him to go straight. The story of how me and the Gov fell in together is an epic tale, full of laughter, frills, and tears. Yangus serves as the obese comic relief with some of the more bizarre moves in the game, such as Golden Oldies, which gathers a gaggle of galloping geezers to grind to the goblins, and Underpants Dance, which is a stun attack involving Yangus dancing with a pair of boxer shorts doubling as pom-poms. Before we reveal our top pick, let's have a look at some honorable mentions. Oh, so this is where you've been hiding, lad. I'm glad I ran into you. I could do with a hand. Bianca Whitaker, Dragon Quest Series. The unofficial series mascot and subject of internet rumors, Bianca Whitaker is the possible wife of the fifth hero of Dragon Quest V as well as his childhood friend. And no, she doesn't suffer a harsh fate if she isn't chosen as the wife. Although, if she is chosen, she gets turned into a statue. It's the Bart Simpson paradox. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Nope, her father doesn't die if you don't marry her, and no, she doesn't become an abused barmaid. Although yes, it is implied that she is the canon wife of the fifth hero. Bianca is so popular, she appears in four other games and is recognized even by people who haven't played Dragon Quest V. So, do you agree with our list? <laughs> Get a load of me. Who's your favorite character from the Dragon Quest series? Now that that's taken care of, let's go. With more noble top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Really? Where? How? Go, blimey! Don't sneak up on me like that!